On this blog, I want to talk about maintenance tech interview questions. I get asked that a lot. What are some good questions to ask new maintenance technicians that you are trying to hire? So I'll give some good broad brush questions that I like to ask. You know, a lot of questions I can't give you that pertain to your company and your company culture, but I'll give you some broad brush questions that I like to ask. I like to keep mine short and sweet because uh, you're not really going to know how someone is until they get out there. So let's go over some broad brush questions that I like to ask. So the first question I like to ask is why maintenance? Why did you choose maintenance as a career? And if they say, uh, well, I just like to work outside. I mean, they still might end up a good tech, but that's not the answer I want to hear. Uh, the answer I'd like to hear is, well, uh, I spent a few years in the plumbing trade or I spent a few years in the HVAC trade or whatever and discovered that I like uh, a more variety of repairs. That's the answer I like to hear, you know. Spent a few years in the trade and, and they discovered that they like a more diverse day. They like to fix multiple things instead of just doing one thing. Now with the pay as it is in maintenance, you, you might get a few who cross over, you know, going from HVAC plumbing or electrical into apartment maintenance but until the pay comes up that's going to be rare because apartment maintenance is not competing with those trades so but it can happen so that's the answer I want to hear after asking somebody why maintenance why are you choosing maintenance because they prefer to work on a variety of things but if they say well I just like to get paid and work outside that's the one you know a little bit of a red flag so all right, on to the next question. And my second question is pretty important. I always ask, do you own basic hand tools? Now you would think you wouldn't have to ask this, but you would be surprised how many guys show up to their handyman job with just their bare hands. So I like to ask, do you own tools? Just basic tools. I'm not asking you know for them to have all kind of crazy tools. Just do you have a screwdriver? Do you have a hammer? Do you have some pliers? You know, basic hand tools. I think the company should provide the big stuff. But uh, that's important because a lot of guys show up to their handyman job with nothing but their bare hands. So that's my second question. Do you own tools? And the third question, are you experienced in HVAC? This is a popular question. Everybody wants the HVAC guy. Now, before we get into this, let me just rant here a little bit. Property managers, turn your, turn your phone up or your computer. The EPA card means nothing, okay? I'm not here to trash the, AP, the EPA card because you gotta have it. All that is though is just so that you can legally carry refrigerant. You're not coming out of an EPA course as an HVAC guru knowing how to work on all equipment. All they teach you in this EPA course is it's illegal to vent refrigerant or Freon as a lot of managers call it. That's all that is. Having an EPA card doesn't mean you're some HVAC guru that can do everything. So I think that's holding back a lot of people. You know, you're, you're not hiring a lot of good guys because, oh, well, he didn't have his EPA card, so we just, we didn't hire him. I didn't have my EPA card, but a guy gave me a chance. Could you imagine, you know, he, if he would have turned me away, who knows where my life would have gone? I don't know. And uh, I didn't have my EPA card but the guy gave me a chance. His name was Johnny Cochran too, like the, the famous O.J. Simpson lawyer. Looked like Johnny Cochran too, it was, it was pretty funny. I'll always remember that guy and, and, I'm, and I'm blessed that he gave me a chance. So anyway, property managers, enough with the EPA card myth, man. That's a myth that's been traveling through the multifamily housing industry faster than a crop duster's fart at Walmart. Enough with the EPA card stuff doesn't make you an HVAC guru. And with that said, everyone should go on call. Everyone should burden or carry the on call burden as a team. You know, a lot, of, a lot of people say, well, he can't go on call. He don't have his EPA card. You don't need an EPA card to suck water out of a float switch. You don't need an EPA card to roll a window unit into an apartment until somebody can get there at normal hours. An HVAC problem that's bigger than a float switch anyway or something easy you're getting a, a window unit anyway so everyone should shoulder the on-call burden the EPA card stuff is 
Uh, since that's one thing that gets under my skin. All right, now that I got that out of the way, I had to rant about that for a, for a little bit. So uh, yeah, are you experienced with HVAC? That's my third question and, and you know, of course a lot of guys are gonna oversell themselves. Yeah, big dog, I've been doing HVAC since Willis Carrier was in diapers, man, shoot. You know, if that joke goes over your head, Willis Carrier invented the air conditioner. So yeah, they'll oversell themselves and I'll, and I'll say, oh great, cool, well uh, let's roll through a very simple HVAC uh, scenario here. So you roll up on a unit and it's low on refrigerant and uh, you open the air handler and you see that there's a piston in there as a metering device for the metering device. How would you, uh, how would you charge the unit? What method would you use to charge the unit? Now if they start stumbling around and stuff and just telling you, oh, well, I'd put it up to 100 PSI. Red flag, this person is not experiencing HVAC. But if they, if they first said, well, first I'd find the leak, Man, I'd buy in the in the interview right there, stick my hand out and say you're hired. If he said first I'd find the leak, that's awesome. You got you got an experienced guy. But then but if he said first I'd find the leak and charge it by superheat, because remember it's got a piston in it, stop the interview right there, stick your hand out and hire that man, because he's gonna be saving you thousands of dollars on HVAC calls. And if he said first I'd find the leak and charge it by superheat, because it has a piston, or if it had a TXV, I'd charge it by subcool. This guy knows what he's talking about. He's good with HVAC. So that's a that's what you want to hear right there. That that's the answer I'm looking for after I ask somebody if they're good with HVAC, and then I roll through a simple scenario. If it's low on refrigerant, you open the air handler and see that the metering device is a piston, and you tell me you're gonna charge by superheat after you fix the leak, man, that's a good answer. But if you tell me you're gonna put it up, sorry about the sun. If you tell me you're gonna put it up to 120 PSI and let it roll, that's not a good answer. Not saying that this guy won't turn out to be a good tech and he's not teachable, but we're going through an interview here. And then after that, I'll just ask them uh, how many years they've been in the business and where they worked at. You know, just the regular interview fluff pretty much after that. I, I keep it simple. You know, you're not really gonna know until somebody gets out there and gets gets to work. But those are my broad brush questions. And then after that, I would just roll through our company culture and stuff and what he can expect. Cause a lot of guys roll in, they don't know what to expect. You know, I tell them, you know, I'd ask, are you okay with being on call one week a month? They say, what is on call? Well, you're gonna be on call 24 hours a day for a whole week. So just let people know that they're gonna be expected to do that and just roll through the company culture, what they're ex expected to do. Cause that's what a lot, that's happened to a lot of guys. They're coming in thinking, oh, I'm just gonna just come in and fix stuff and go home. Well, not really, man. You're gonna have to go on call one week a month or so. So that, that'll keep a lot of guys from leaving after they find out the on-call thing. All right, so that's it. Those are my broad brush questions. And uh, as I'm doing that as well, I'm also feeling the guy out, feeling his energy. If he's got bad energy, I'll have to pass. If he's got good energy, good attitude, I'm, more, I'm pretty likely to hire the guy, even if he has a little experience. But uh, those are my broad brush questions. What made you choose maintenance? Um, do you own your own tools? Ask if he's experienced with HVAC and if he says, oh yeah, I'm awesome with HVAC, I'm gonna roll through my little simple question there about the piston and how would you charge the unit. And then after that, you know, ask him how many years he's been in, in the trades or in the uh, multifamily housing industry, maintenance industry. And then after that, I'm just gonna roll through a little company culture, talk about on call, are you okay with going on call? And that's pretty much it. So those are my interview questions for those for for those of you who've uh, been asking and um, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.